It is my pleasure to participate at the 55th virtual 2020 annual meetings of the boards of governors of the African Development Bank and the 46th annual meeting of the African Development Fund due to the unprecedented impact of COVID-19 pandemic that makes it impossible to conduct physical meetings. I would, like, I would, I would also like to extend my profound gratitude to the FDB pres president, Dr. Akinuomi Ayodeji Adesina and his team for organizing the 2020 virtual annual meetings under the theme, Building Resilience for a Post-COVID-19 Africa. Furthermore, the government of Zimbabwe recognizes the critical agenda item on the election of the uh, bank president for the next five years, which will be done through e-voting due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Let me turn to the Zimbabwe situation. The government of Zimbabwe continues to pursue sound macroeconomic and financial management policies and is on a new trajectory accompanied by key reforms that stimulate uh, domestic production, export growth, and re rebuilding and transformation of the economy. The reforms are meant to drive economic development and on a platform of progressive re-engagement with the international community in line with Vision 2030. Therefore, the transitional stabilization program that we're implementing is premised on stabilizing the economy and the financial sector, introducing necessary policy and institutional reforms to enable a private sector-led economy, launching a quick wins to stimulate productive, uh, productivity growth and sustainable job creation. To this end, the 2020 national budget marked the transition from austerity to a growth stimulation and employment generation era. Strong emphasis is now reviving key sectors of the economy through uh, promotion of production, uh, oriented investment and productivity without losing focus on fiscal responsibility as well as prioritizing the following areas and enhancing productivity for growth, job creation, equitable development, strengthening social safety nets, strengthening competitiveness, and build, building long-term resilience of the economy. However, the economy has been confronted by a number of challenges as a result of major shocks from mul multiple fronts, the significant ones being, one, the impact of climate change shocks in the form of the 2019-2020 drought and cyclone Idai. Two, the energy crisis and, and challenge. Three, currency volatility. Uh, and four, outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has been the most significant of the Black Swan events to impact our economy. Pursuant to the above, the government has revised the 2020 growth projection from plus 3% to a minus 4.5% with contraction now impacted across um, all productive sectors of the economy, namely agriculture, manufacturing, uh, mining, tourism, uh, with the exception of the health services, information, uh, communication, and technology uh, sectors. I now turn more specifically to the COVID-19 pandemic. As of the 23rd of August, 2020, uh, Zimbabwe has recorded 5,930 confirmed cases, including 4,872 recoveries and 155 deaths. There is significant concern around the most recent surge in the COVID-19 positive cases attrib attributed to local transmission. Besides the loss of life, the pandemic has destabilized economies globally through such supply chain disruptions in trade, in tourism, productivity, in the industrial sector, and through other global integration mechanisms, including travel. With regards to the domestic economy, the impact of the pandemic is being transmitted through the following channels. One, lower commodity demand and international commodity prices, except for gold, which has breached new highs. Two, reduce tourist arrivals due to travel restrictions. Three, disruption of global supply chains for both raw materials and final products and services. 
And finally, the uh, slowdown of global financial flows, including, including uh, credit availability and portfolio investments. In view of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy, government has come up with mitigatory interventions covering both prevention and support to productive sectors in order to save lives and uh, livelihoods, as well as support uh, for the production, uh, the production uh, in, uh, in, uh, in order, as well as support for the productive sector in order to limit the damage to the economy. To this end, direct uh, support amounting to 2.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars went to various ministries and departments as follows. Uh, we, we put in place COVID-19 risk allowances, uh, the additional costs from recruitment of additional staff to fight the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, to finance capacity building for the health sector staff, uh, including training. Uh, uh, resources went for, to the procurement of health and laboratory equipment, including consumables. Uh, we spent resources on the procurement of personal protective equipment, PPE. We also spent these resources on re rehabilitation and construction of isolation units. We also spent resources drilling additional water bowls to provide clean water. And finally, we spent these resources for the production of personal protective equipment, especially face masks and sanitizers by our local universities. Let me turn to the stimulus package. In line with the theme of this year's annual meetings of building resilience for a, a post-COVID-19 Africa, government has also unveiled an 18.2 billion Zimbabwe dollar stimulus package amounting to about 29% of the 2020 national budget. The package is aimed at scaling up production levels across all sectors of the economy addressing the constraints faced by a large section of the small scale industries and in improving uh, health facilities. This package was allocated as follows, agricultural sector, 6.1 uh, billion uh, Zimbabwe dollars, uh, working capital fund for industry, uh, 3 billion Zimbabwe dollars, mining sector facility, uh, 1 billion Zimbabwe dollars, SME support fund, half a billion Zimbabwe dollars, a tourism support, fund half a billion Zimbabwe dollars, a liquidity uh, a support fund through the central bank, two billion Zimbabwe uh, uh, dollars, a health sector support fund of uh, one billion Zimbabwe dollars, a broad relief measures covering a variety of areas uh, amounting to 1.5 billion Zimbabwe dollars, and then the COVID-19 cash transfers to the vulnerable amounting to 2.4 billion Zimbabwe dollars, and finally, an arts and sports grant to support those in the arts and sports sector amounting to 20 million Zimbabwe dollars. Let me turn to other supporting uh, measures. Uh, the government also relaxed input uh, duties on selected raw material imports for the three quarters up to the end of year 2020 to cushion producers and to manage imported inflation, considering that trade has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. A tax credit of up to 50% of expenditure was instituted, and this will enable businesses and companies to have funds which will be invested back to boost the working capital in order to sustain uh, operations. On behalf of the government, I would like to acknowledge support from all development partners, and in particular, the grant from the African Development Bank amounting to 10 million UAE, or 13.65 million US dollars towards the COVID-19 pandemic. This was in response to His Excellency the President Idi Munangagwa's uh, request for 300 million in line with the uh, uh, government's national COVID-19 preparedness and response plan. To this end, the development partners have pledged 205 million US dollars of which 43.4 million US dollars has already been dispersed to date. The support is targeted uh, towards the eight pillars of the re response plan, which include uh, coordination, planning and monitoring, risk communication and community engagement, surveillance, rapid response teams and case investigation, uh, points of entry, national laboratories, uh, infection prevention and control, case management, procurement, 
uh, operational support as well as logistics. Let me turn to the issue of compensation to the former uh, uh, farm owners. The government of Zimbabwe signed a 3.5 billion US dollar global compensation agreement with the former commercial farmers representatives in accordance with section 295 of the constitution with the following provisions. 50% down payment within 12 months of signing the agreement and the balance to be paid over a period of 48 months thereafter. And government and the former farm owners have established a joint resource mobilization committee to work with the Minister of Finance and Economic Development for government to raise funds through long-term debt instruments and other financing instruments up to a, a tenure of 30 years. The compensation is for improvements on the farms, which includes biological assets, land clearance, and on, on compulsory, on compulsory acquired uh, land by the government during the fast track land reform program, which began 20 years ago. The government is committed to make this agreement a success and His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe has already appointed a joint resource mobilization committee whose task is to design and execute a resource mobilization plan. The joint resource mobilization committee has already started its work in Inest and will seek the assistance of various international cooperative partners to help deliver on its mandate. And I will turn to Zim Fund. I'd like to thank the bank uh, for administering the Zim Fund on behalf of the government of Zimbabwe. The Zim Fund has been tremendous in, in terms of improvement in, in, the, in power and the water and sanitation sectors uh, with state of art equipment being installed in various projects. This impact was witnessed by the Bank Executive Board led by Mbuyami Matungulu, uh, who visited the country with his uh, team of EDs uh, over the period 17 to 21 February, 2020. As alluded above, the implementation of the project activities under Zim Fund were delayed due to travel restrictions of key personnel, as well as slowdown in the importation of goods and equipment due to COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. To this end, while most of the project project was, uh, to this end, while most of the project will have ended, there are some unfinished project activities, uh, are, uh, especially on the projects on emergency power infrastructure rehabilitation and consolidation works, and the urgent water supply and sanitation project in Chitunguiza, and the outfall sewer ancillaries. To this end, I'm grateful to the banks support towards the extension of the Zim Fund mandate for a further 14 months from 18 October 2020 to 31 December 2021 to enable completion of the above uh, outstanding project activities. Let me turn to overall bank support. I'd like to reassure the bank of its commitment to, to, to project implementation as evidenced by improved progress across all projects being supported under the African Development Fund, the ADF. The government appreciates the bank's support in the recently signed agreements uh, for the following uh, uh, projects. A tax and accountability enhancement project amounting to 10.4 million US dollars. The Africa Disaster Risk Financing Capacity Building ADI FRI project amounting to 685,000 uh, US dollars. Uh, innovation solutions to support livelihood of vulnerable communities project amounting to 1.424 million US dollars. Enhancement of data collection and sharing of for effective water related uh, disaster management. This is under climate development and uh, that amounts to 420,885 uh, uh, US uh, dollars. Um, let me turn to the African Development Fund resources on ADF 15. The government would like to further express its gratitude to the bank following the approval of the three-year rolling performance-based allocations and transition support facility pillar one resources under the African Development Fund replenishment cycle. We are fully committed to fulfilling the conditions precedent for accessing the ADF 15 resources. Let me turn to areas clearance and debt restructuring. The government is committed and continues to engage various creditors for areas clearance and initiative 
expected to open access to new development financing. It should be noted that the country's capacity to clear old areas and meet obligations arising from new financing hinges on the strength of the economy, uh, which in turn requires implementation of deep reforms under the transitional stabilization program uh, agenda, which are underway. Government has started uh, making token payments to the bank, the AFDB that is, uh, the World Bank and the European Investment Bank, thus indicating our strong commitment towards the debt arrears clearance process. In addition, government is still committed to uh, discussing with the International Monetary Fund a recalibrated staff monitor program in order to focus uh, 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 on the continuation of building a successful track record uh, for sound policy uh, uh, for the future and also set the stage for a, a fully financed fund supported program. In conclusion, let me conclude by applauding the call for building resilience for a post-COVID-19 Africa. It is through this initiative that we'll be able to transform our economies and address challenges and adverse impact of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I thank you.